if you've ever cleaned more in the military than you ever did in your entire life. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is actually out of control. I've actually gotten some notifications from YouTube. They are very disappointed in you. I, however, am not. So continue to do your thing. The comment section is what makes this channel amazing. I appreciate you guys. We'll start reading some good comments every video because I think that would be pretty fun. And of course, the sponsor for this channel is Brownells. Brownells is the hero that we both need and deserve. For all of your 2A needs, go check them out. Get their website a click. Link is right below. They absolutely rock. Now, this particular video is sponsored by two different brands. We got Hero Coffee and of course, Leather Back Gear. 10% off with discount code GRANTHUM. You have NIJ certified armor and with the coffee, of course, depending on who you want to donate to, the different brands donate to different things such as firefighters, police, farmers, whatever you could possibly want. A big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, my often forgotten, but most certainly not by me. H1 Cobras, welcome to the channel. A little shout out for my Marines out there. Today, we're going to be talking about a wonderful, wonderful shotgun. That is going to be the Benelli M4 slash M1014. Um, truly just a wonderful weapon. But before we get into it, it's going to be important to note what is my relationship with this company. It's important that we disclose that. That is actually regulated and we must do it. So, Benelli doesn't know who I am. I doubt they ever will, but I love their weapons. Uh, this weapon was purchased by me uh, a long time ago, and I've had it for a long time, and I've been shooting it for a long time, and that is my relationship with Benelli. So, with our full disclosures out of the way, let's go ahead, let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about the shotgun, a little bit about the history, and get into it. So, what makes this weapon so interesting? Well, the Benelli M4 is among a very small group of shotguns that were designed from the ground up to be combat shotguns. So it puts it into a very small group. So from its inception, its only purpose was to be used in combat. And that makes it very cool and very interesting for the design choices that they chose to implement on this particular weapon. Now these Benelli M4s, the M1014s, very much so the, almost the same weapon, have been used by a large variety of users, anything from the United States Marine Corps, of which I had the wonderful opportunity to talk to a fair amount of Marines who had the opportunity to use this in combat to devastate an effect, um, to police officers, um, and to, of course, to private citizens and foreign militaries who have used this to very great effect. This is a very effective weapon, and because of the amount of time that that this has been used in combat. This is a somewhat more easy review in the fact that we already know that this is a proven, that this is a reliable, and that this is a very, very durable weapon. So all we have to really do is talk about what makes it so interesting compared to other shotguns and why you might want to choose one if you're in the market for a shotgun. Now, if you're not even looking for a shotgun, nonetheless, it is still a very cool weapon and knowledge is power, so don't leave. Benelium 4. This is a semi-automatic, 12 gauge shotgun. Now, depending on the military or the civilian version, you with the military version, you get a seven round tube. And with the civilian version, you get a five round tube with a cap, which we don't have here, but you can see them in other videos. Who cares though? Point is, it's really stupid that Benelli doesn't sell them to the civilian market with the seven round tube. Stupid, just buy yourself a seven round tube within the law. Um, in any case, uh, with the seven round tube, you have seven tube plus one, plus one more with a very interesting loading technique, which we'll talk about later. Um, this does take two and three quarters shotgun shells, or it takes three inch magnums. Never forget, gentlemen, three inches of magnum. One very interesting thing about the Benelli M4, in my opinion, is one, how easy it is to take down, and also its gas system. So the gas system is very interesting, something called the ARGO, which stands for Auto-Regulating Gas Operated. Cool. So in any case, if you guys want to take a look at that, to take down the Benelli M4, it's very simple. Simply, uns well, of course, first, safety first. We're going to go ahead and we're going to check that chamber. We are clear, nothing in there. We'll go ahead and unscrew, uncap right there. Take out our entire assembly. Cool. You can see how easy it is to pull the Benelli M4 apart, and that is actually one of the appeals because if you're in the field, it's very easy to replace these barrel and 
um, operating system assemblies for a shorter one. So if I needed a 14 inch entry model, it'd be very easy to simply pull that off and put on a whole new barrel with this operating system. So if we take a look underneath these hand guards, we have the Argo system. It's a very simple system. It is self-cleaning and actually it does work really well. In fact, there are many documented cases of Benelli M4s going well north of 20,000 rounds, all the way up to 30,000 rounds with no cleaning whatsoever. Now, me personally, I clean it every maybe 10,000 or so. In fact, for the first three years that I had this, I didn't clean it once and it saw a lot of different shotgun courses. So in any case, you had these two operating rods which are piston driven and they impinge upon the bolt carry group and cycle it. So it's a very simple, very reliable system. And what's very cool about it is that depending on, it pretty much works with every round, anything from your, you know, good old slugs and buckshot to lighter loadings, it just auto-regulates it. There's no problem there. And the recoil is also incredibly light because it kind of absorbs a lot of that force coming into you because it is a gas operated weapon. So it works incredibly well. Now, that being said, with less lethals, you will have to manually cycle the weapon because there simply isn't enough gas to cycle them in most cases. And if there was enough gas, you know, the less lethal would probably be a more than lethal. <laughs> so we wouldn't want that. In any case, the Benelli M4 is a very simple to field strip we weapon, which is of course vitally important for any weapon that is going to be in use in the military and especially used by United States Marines. We want to keep it very simple for these guys. They are weapon experts, but we don't want to ask too much of them because beyond killing, there's not a whole lot that they can do. Just kidding. Big love for my Marines and all the work that they've done. So if this weapon is reliable, that is durable, and that it is Marine proof, actually Marine proof. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do what the Marine Corps loves. We're going to go all the way from the hole right here, all the way to the butt. And we're going to talk about what makes this shotgun so incredible. So to start off with, the finish is actually quite good. We have anodizing on the aluminum parts and we have a very tough mil-spec phosphate coating on the outside and the inside. It is a very resistant weapon when it comes to rust and all that type of corrosion. And if you need just a little bit more, there is an H2O model if you think that you're a U.S. Navy SEAL and you're operating on the ocean all the time. But in any case, there is a Benelli for everybody and uh, you're not going to really gonna have any troubles with the finish wearing off. You can see on this particular model um, has gone through a lot of stuff from backpacking to shotgun courses to hunting to just everything you can possibly think about being bounced around the back of a car. It has been through it all and uh, the finish is quite good. It is a little bit faded and worn, but this weapon is holding up exceptionally well. So the finish is the first thing that you should talk about. A good matte finish to make sure that there's no reflection, less of a chance of seeing you. Of course, you can go ahead and spray paint this bitch, make it a little bit better. One thing that should be noted too, is on the military model, you do have a fixed choke. Now, I'm not sure if our new Marines out there are getting the newer models that have changeable chokes, but on this one, there is a choke that you can swap out. So, so again, if you need to swap out chokes, very easy, standard Benelli chokes, work well, um, use whatever you need. I'm just using the factory one that came with it and it is working absolutely fine. Now from there, we have an 18.5 inch barrel right here. Absolutely perfect for your slugs and your buck, anything that you could possibly need to use with it. There are shorter models with the 14 inch barrel for entry and that type of stuff. And those are cool. I do prefer this longer barrel because I find it to be very utilitarian in the fact that it can be used for pretty much everything. You can shoot trap and skeet with it if you really wanted to. It's not the best, but it works and you can hunt, do whatever you need with it. So I do like that barrel length quite a bit. Now, another thing to note is how much stability you have on the magazine tube. Uh, you have quite a few rings to ensure that that magazine tube is not going to be able to get knocked out of place and to be put this weapon out of action. So you can see that right there as well as a very st sturdy and durable magazine cap. Going up from the barrel, it should be important to talk a little bit about the sights. The sights that come with the Benelli M4 are actually quite exceptional. We, of course, on our front sight, they have a simple white dot, and we have the wings protected on either side. As you can see right there, we're going to go ahead and muzzle the camera. So we have the wings on both sides to protect it to ensure that the front sight itself doesn't get knocked around. Those protect it. And then the same on the rear sight, where it is a simple ghost ring, and it also has the wings to protect it. And I want to say how nice that ghost ring sight is on the rear. Uh, it can be easy to kind of fuck that up, but they did a wonderful job. It is fully adjustable. And when you bring that weapon up, 
that sight is just absolutely perfect. Um, it feels so good. Now, with the adjustable stock, I see a lot of people running these all the way up. Um, and that is certainly an option in certain situations like door breaching and that type of stuff. But understand that you won't be able to look through your peep sight. So a lot of guys, they have the Picatinny rail with an EOTech on top. Then you can certainly see through it. Again, it depends on your application of your shotgun as a quick note there. Now, sights are awesome. Now everyone's gonna ask about the mount that I have right here. So of course we shout out good companies. Um, we have ScalarWorks, bought this one. It's called a Sync 02 and it is for an Aimpoint T2 or Comp M5 or T1. So we have a T Aimpoint T2 on this right here. I originally had an Aimpoint TL on here. Um, and that did not like the recoil on the Benelli. So I switched over to T2, T2 being perhaps one of the toughest optics out there outside of the Comp M5, and it has been absolutely superb. And what's very cool about it is that you can co-witness the iron sights while looking through the optic, and that works absolutely fine. Coming down the magazine tube, again, we already talked about it, but kind of a shame that you get the cap tubes that come from the factory with five and so seven. Swap it out, make sure you're legal and all that kind of stuff. Going down, we do have an impact weapons components. This is a Benelli M4 scout mount that allows you to direct mount some type of Surefire or Arasaka or Mod Light weapon light onto there. So we have an Arasaka weapon light on here with a push cap. So that way when I'm holding the weapon, it's very easy to then activate and pushy cap it and, uh, you know, go ahead and let people know, boop, boop, you're about to die. So. We have that as well. It has a QD slot right there. Um, I don't mean to pimp companies, but uh, I bought this as well and I thought it's pretty awesome. I like a very simple setup when it comes to my Benelli M4 because I like the clean lines and I think this all looks very aesthetic. So good on them for making good products that are awesome. So going from there, let's talk a little bit about the handguard right here. So the handguard, um, you know, is very simple. There's not a whole lot of mounting options. And of course you can get handguards that allow you to do all this stuff out there. But if I'm being honest, I really like the simplicity of this handguard right here. You know, I understand I can put Picatinny or M-Lock all around this, but if I don't need it, I don't need it. And I do prefer the simplicity um, of this product and the fact that it just works. It's been no, been combat proven already and I didn't want to throw anything to kind of break up the very clean lines of the Benelli M4. So this handguard works absolutely fine for me. Now, you have to understand though, that as thick as the barrel is and as well as the handguard works, these weapons do get hot fast. You put about 25 rounds through it, you're gonna to start to feel some pretty intense heat off that barrel. So do make sure you have a good old thick glove on that you can handle the heat off that weapon. So getting into manual of arms. The manual of arms on the Benelli M4 is very different. So if you're not familiar with using a Benelli M4 compared to like a pump action even, um, you're in for a little bit of a surprise, but I think the best manual when it comes to explaining how to work the Benelli M4 is actually the Marine Corps manual, which goes into very good, very excruciating detail on different ways of loading and dealing with this weapon to ensure that you ha will have success. So to start off with, what's really interesting about the Benelli M4 in my mind is the fact that once you have a round loaded, these are all dummy rounds, by the way, we're not loading live rounds into here. So once you have a round loaded into there, until I hit that shell release lever, no more rounds are gonna come into the chamber from the magazine tube. So if I shuck that round out right now, there's no other rounds in there. So the reason for this is a couple of reasons. First off, um, what's stated directly in the manual is if I need to either put this into a vehicle or some concern where I don't need to fire it for a while, it's a fairly safe configuration to have the weapon with the chamber unloaded, but the magazine tube still ready so I can load it when needed, but travel safely without a round in. Another reason is if I have to hand this weapon over to somebody over a wall, something like that, where I have to hand it off, it's kind of nice to be able to empty out that chamber before handing that over, just for all those kind of safety concerns. And beyond that, if I need to swap out a round, it's fairly easy then to swap the rounds out with a very simple procedure. So we'll talk about that for just a moment right here. So if I have a round in the chamber, such as a buckshot, and I see somebody who needs to be relieved of their lives a little bit more distance away than I'd be comfortable shooting with buckshot. God, this thing looks mean on camera, by the way. Um, I might need to switch over to a slug. 
And again, that is the beauty of a shotgun, is that you can have a variety of rounds for a variety of situations, anything from anything from buckshot for your closer shots up to slugs for your longer shots or breaching rounds. Um, shotguns are very versatile weapons. So in this case, typically I have my um, different rounds on the side right here. So we have slugs. So if I need to switch over to a slug, how the manual states to do it is to keep my weak hand on the weapon. I'm going to grab my shell out, put that between my index finger and my thumb right here. I'm going to use the pinky of my hand blade down, I'm going to rack that round out, I'm going to insert that other round, open it up, and then I have a slug loaded at that point. Again, there are multiple ways to do it and everybody's gonna have a slightly different method of doing it. But the point is, is that if you need to switch rounds, it is fairly easy. And then again, whether you wanna retain that round or do whatever, the point is, if you have to switch around, it's fairly easy to do so. So we've talked about a bunch of the controls. So at this point, we have our shell release lever right here. So if I have a round in the chamber, I need to eject that, but I need to load the next round for whatever reason, I can go ahead and if I hit that, I can eject out the current round in the chamber, release that, and that will load up the next round right there. Now, in addition to that, if I'm unloading the weapon and cycle the weapon out of the chamber, I flip it around, and I'm releasing the shells out manually, as stated in the manual. Once I get those out, if I try to lock this bolt back, it's not gonna lock back because it's only gonna lock back on an empty once the hammer is dropped. But to lock it back, what I can do is I can hit that shell release lever, and then I can lock that bolt back at that point. And that brings us to our next point, which is the bolt release. So I fired all my rounds, shotguns up, and I'm out. What I'm gonna do at that point, I can go ahead and take a shell, drop into the chamber, hit that bolt release right here. The weapon is now loaded. At that point, I'm gonna go ahead and we can load up our shotgun. So go ahead and start feeding those into the tube. There are of course very easy, very fast ways to load this, whether it be quad loading, it's a little bit more difficult on the Benelli M4 due to the pistol grip right here. But in general, in combat situations, most people will agree that having your eyes up and one by one getting those rounds in as quick as you can is going to be good. You want to make sure you can see what's going on. At this point, we're at the one of the more interesting aspects when it comes to the Benelli M4, what is called ghost loading, carrier loading, whatever you want to call it. But it's a very interesting concept. So this is what gives you your 7 plus 2 on your Benelli M4 or 5 plus 2. So what I mean by that is you can have seven in your tube, one in your chamber, plus one floating inside the shell carrier. So I'll show you how that works. So how you're gonna do it is you're gonna go ahead and take your first round, load that bitch in, drop it, right? So our weapon's on safe, of course. We're gonna go ahead, take our seven rounds, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna load those guys in right there. So once all seven rounds are in there, we're gonna pretend that we have loaded seven rounds in because I don't feel like doing it on camera. What we can then do is insert our round and get a second round in there. It's a very unique aspect when it comes to the Benelli M4. So what you're gonna do is you're going to retract the bolt. Now you're gonna retract it just enough so that the, sh the shell carrier does not lift up. You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna drop that round that was in the chamber down to the shell carrier. You're gonna push around forward. You're gonna push the round that's already down there down. And then you're gonna ride that bolt forward and then Make sure it's all the way forward, and now you have a round in the chamber, a round in the shell carrier, and then your seven in the tube. And that will fire no problem, as you can see here in this video. So we have the military type Benelli M4 right here, seven plus one, you can actually get seven plus two. Let me explain that to you, it's a ghost loading. So this is actually in the Marine Corps manual. So if we go ahead and we drop the bolt right here, when I pull the bolt back, you can see the shell carrier doesn't actually lift up until I pull it a little bit back there. So you can actually get an extra round in there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that back until the shell carrier doesn't lift. We can pop our round in right there as soon as I get that in. And then I can actually get a second round in to the chamber itself. I can simply ride that bolt forward and good, we're good. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot that. Enough about all of that in the manual of arms. The bolt release has been criticized as being too small. To be honest, it's not really a big deal to me. I want it to be a little smaller. I want it to be accidentally hit in certain situations. The charging handle could certainly be a little bit larger, but I have no problems with it. Those are easily swappable out in the field. The shell release lever is easily actuated, so that is no problem at all. I like the controls overall. Now, the safety 
isn't my favorite. It can be easily reversed to either side, but it certainly works well. Now that brings us to our favorite part when it comes to Grand Thumb, and that is going to be the trigger. So put on a little Unchained Melody, put your finger right over mine. We're gonna feel that trigger right there. So safety's off, press into it. Teeny, the tiniest amount of play. And then we hit our wall. Very nice let off, to be honest. So that is a about a six-ish, seven-ish pound pull. Let's feel that reset. Short, crisp, military-like. <laughs> it's actually a nice trigger, guys. It's pretty light. Um, I like it quite a bit. I've always been pretty impressed with the Benelli trigger, and it feels good. Short and crisp. That's all that you need. Uh, good trigger, especially when it comes to a military gun. That is exactly what you want. Now, from there, that brings us over to our grip. Um, many movies have made reference to the grip and doesn't slip in the wet and whatever. Who cares? The grip feels good. Uh, it's large. Some people complain about that. No problem. Uh, it feels good even for medium-sized man hands, and I like it quite a bit. A lot of people, especially the Marines that I've talked to, have been very critical of the stock, specifically because of how thin it is right there. And I think it depends on your facial structure. For me, it feels really good. But for some people, they say they absolutely hate the way it makes them feel, and that within 20 rounds, that thing is really digging into them and making them feel pretty shitty. So that's going to be a personal preference thing. The nice thing about the Benelli M4 is that there are multiple stocks out there that you can switch out for. So I'm not too worried about that. I really do like the military stock on this particular weapon. It feels very good to me, um, and it's precisely what I need. I like how it can collapse down for easier transport, especially when backpacking, and that once you're ready to rock and roll, it's pretty easy to pull that thing out and get it ready to go. So, you know, what does that really bring us to? How is the Benelli M4? Um, without a doubt, I think the Benelli M4 is the quintessential combat shotgun. It's probably the best one out there currently. There are other shotguns that come close in many regards, and we'll talk about those in future videos. But this thing, compared to other weapons that are currently out there, has been well proven in terms of durability, in terms of reliability and finish resistance and ability to withstand the United States Marine Corps, which is a lot to say a lot. Not that they haven't broken them, but they have performed very admirably over the last 15 or so years. Now, that being said, there's no doubt that a tube-fed shotgun feels quite archaic, especially nowadays with all the modern weapons that you guys are used to. And that is kind of a problem with shotgun shells in general. So as magazine-fed shotguns get better and better and more reliable, I'm sure that at some point this weapon will be obsolete. But for now, I think when it comes to shotguns, I think a Benelli M4 that is tube-fed is perhaps one of the most reliable and durable combat shotguns that's currently out there on the market. So. If you're looking for that, for a shotgun for that particular purpose, certainly we have this. Shotguns aren't great for everything, but they are kind of good all-around guns. And compared to other weapons out there, there's no doubt that a 12-gauge has a very good probability within a certain range with the correct loading of putting somebody on the ground within one round. Many weapons eclipse this particular weapon. But if there's one thing that we can say about 12-gauge shotguns, it's that few weapons eclipse their ability to put a person or most creatures on the planet down with one round. But it should be noted that many weapons certainly do eclipse the Benelli M4, not certainly because it's not a capable weapon, but merely because it's a shotgun. Shotguns do have their limitations, but that being said, at close range, few weapons have the one-shot put-down capability that, that a 12-gauge shotgun does have. And before we end, we should also note how cool these are right here. These right here are the shell carriers from STAC. So what's cool about them is that put whatever rounds you need in them. You can stick them to the side right here with Velcro. That way you don't have to tap into the receiver or do anything crazy like that or take up a good optic mounting location like we have right here. And what I also like about them is the fact that these very easily fit into M4 mag pouches, which was by design by STAC. So I like them quite a bit. They don't seem to wear out at all as far as the elastic's ability to retain shotgun shells, so I like them a lot. Um, can't recommend them enough. Again, these are something that I bought, and I just, I like them. I like the guys from the company, good people. Definitely go check them out. But in any case, guys, Bedellian Force kick ass. Super cool shotgun, looks cool, combat capable, great weapon. But if you don't train, 
you're still going to suck with it. So make sure that you get out there and you get training. Tons of great guys to get training from. Pat McNamara, Bear Solutions, Tr Travis Haley, Haley Strategic, probably my dad, Cogworks, all these guys. Check them out. Get that training. Thunder Ranch, speaking of shotguns, get training from these guys and get better because you are the weapon. Uh, these are the tool that will be utilized by you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you guys. I've got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys, do your dishes at night. When you do your dishes at night, you feel better about life because the sink is clean, then you wake up with clean dishes. It's a good way to run life. <laughs> guys, if you made it this far, a big thank you to you. Big thank you to my Patreon followers. You guys absolutely rock. Love you guys. Tons more great stuff coming. I've got nothing else for you.